The women's ward in Iran's largest cancer hospital. A two-month admission wait means beds are always full. Conditions here were already bad enough. But doctors warn sanctions have led to a critical shortage of key drugs needed for chemotherapy and the treatment of leukemia. If we don't inject a drug to that tumor, uh, tumor is progress, metastatic, and uh, a lot of um, bad things for that patient. And uh, drop, drop, drop lead to death. Medicine and food are supposed to be exempt from the sanctions. Reinstated by the U.S. after it pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal last year. The problem is most financial transactions with Iran are banned. We have money to buy the right, but they do not accept our money. The sanctions are not just affecting cancer patients. General hospitals, like this one, are also feeling the strain. Iran imports only about 3% of its medications, but they represent about a third in total value of all drugs sold here. Doctors at this Jewish charity hospital say the drugs are usually specialized and highly valued. For example, in our operation rooms, the drugs that we now need are for anesthesia. It doesn't make any difference what his or her illness is. They have to be anesthetized. The drug is in shortage. We are facing intense problems acquiring it. Sanctions are supposed to target Iran's ruling elite. If child of a man in the power needs some medication, he would buy it by dollar from Turkey, from UAE, from Europe, even from USA, and transfer it to Iran from this airplane. The pressure is on the people from mid to low socioeconomic class. Back at the cancer hospital, a new wing is being built to help shorten the wait list. Though financial restrictions means new equipment cannot be easily acquired, a task that may prove even harder if some European nations press ahead with the threat to make sanctions even tougher. Jack Barton, CGTN, Tehran.